are gathered here to discuss capitalistic economic system. Why we are going towards capitalistic economy? What are the merits of capitalist economy? In the world there are 192 nations and majority of nations are following capitalistic economic system. We all know the history of USSR which was a communist country, communist economic system which was established in 1917 and developed from underdeveloped states to the developed countries of the world. And it was so strong that the world is divided into two blocks, capitalist block and communist block. And it, it was one of the developed countries of the world. But in 1990, there was, a dip, there was a breakdown of USSR into 15 nations. And out of 15 nations, Russia is number one. Then Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Tashkan, Belarus. Many nations on the political map appeared after 1990. It was 1991, which is crucial period for Indian economy. In 1990, in 1990, India was also facing the great challenges, internal as well as external. <coughs> that is the economic crisis. And the foreign currency in our country, Indian economy, was 1.26 billion dollars in December 1990. In January 1991, there was one billion dollar in Indian economy. <coughs> this is crisis period, and that's what that was resolved by Prime Minister at that time, uh, respected Chandrasekhar ji. Chandrasekhar ji decided to mortgage gold and take dollar for the immediate liabilities on the country to repay public, external public debt, which were likely to mention. India adopted mixture of capitalism and socialism, that is mixed economy. In 1948 industrial policy, government of India declared that India is a mixed economy where there is simultaneous existence of both <coughs> capitalist, <coughs> capitalist economy and socialist economy. Features. Features of both capitalism and socialism will coexist in Indian economy. I think at that time Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru developed Nehruvian economics. What is Nehruvian economics? That he, he, he thought that industries temple in India and that temple will be under public sector. He thought to produce from needle to ship by public sector. In 1951 there were only seven public sector under central government of India which has increased to 248 in 1990 before liberalization, privatization, globalization in 1991. But thereafter, today, the number of public sector units under central government is 300 plus with Navaratna Maharatna, Mini Ratna. 
public sector units is deep rooted in our economy because of Nehruvian model. That Nehru took 80% public sector and 20% private sector when India got independence and one first five year plan, second five year plan continuously operated during his time. We are now focusing on the aspect of merits of capitalism. It is better to understand capitalism first, that what is the merit? First merit, first you define capitalism, define economy. So what is capitalistic economy? What is economy? Economy is a situation where economic variables interact and produce goods and services. Economy is a place where economic activities are performed to generate income, output and employment. This is called GDP. This leads to development. So under capitalism, economic activities are performed by all factors of production and result is increase in income, increase in employment, increase in output, increase in prosperity, increase in developmental rate. So when we talk about the merits of capitalism, the first merit is high production. First merit of capitalism is high production. Under capitalistic economy, there is a golden rule of capitalism. That golden, golden rule is motive of profit and fear of loss. This golden rule Motive of profit and fear, fear of loss. loss. Motive of profit and fear of loss. And another thing is known as individual hands. Individual hands is coined by Adam Smith. And this individual hand term is reproduced from Adam Smith to in his book Economics by Samuelson. When you read Samuelson's book, Economics, there will find he quoted Adam Smith, individual hand. This individual hand under capitalism is forces of demand and forces of supply acting and reacting in the economy. So, production increases under capitalism, high production because of this individual hand which operates and decides what to produce, how much to produce, for whom to produce. All these are calculated by producers, entrepreneurs at that time. Today all these are produced on the basis of artificial intelligence and produced by robotics. Things have drifted from 1776 to 2019. In 1776, Adam Smith said that under capitalism, there is a principle of self, principle of self, Self motive and that motive is to produce by using 
own self thinking that some other person is producing goods for my use. I am producing goods for others use. So everyone, everyone concentrated in the production, whatever things he is producing. Demand and supply will be invisible. If he is farmer, he is thinking for farming. If he is bakery man, he is thinking for biscuits and cookies. One who is butcher, he is thinking of fresh cutting and uh, selling. So everyone work by self-interest. Principle of self-interest was the main factor under capitalism that is known as classical capitalism. Modern capitalism factor is artificial intelligence. Things of internet, crowds, robotics, use of robotics in industry. These are the features of modern capitalism. But in classical capitalism, Adam, Adam Smith pointed out principle of self-interest. Self-interest. You are farmer, you do self-interest and produce grains of good quality. You decide to produce cash crops or commercial crops. And this will be sold in the market. Individual hands are there, demand and supply. So the first principle under capitalism which helps in more production, high production is principle of self-interest. Then there is a golden rule under capitalism. Motive of profit, profit fear, of fear of loss. This golden rule operates throughout the economy. Second, second advantage is competition. Under capitalism, there is competition in labor market, there is competition in capital market, there is competition in commodity market, competition in factor market. And Adam S. will say that competition means efficiency. Efficient will, will enter and inefficient will leave the industry. There is a free entry, free exit. No restrictions. In classical capitalism, there were no restrictions. Fear of loss will exit, will lead to exit of the firms. And motive of profit, there will be entry of the firm. In that way, production process is going on without any disturbance. Competition will lead to efficiency. Adam Smith said that high production is because of higher efficiency in capitalistic economy. In capitalistic economy, efficiency of factors of production is very high. Because Adam Smith pointed out principle of division of labor. He had given example of pin, or pin, pin factory. He has cited example of pin factory. That one labor can produce 100 pin in a day. But if the process is divided, subdivided, cutting of wire, string, wire, needling of wire, making dog, making pointed out and then several thousand of pin is produced by per, 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 per labor because of division of labor. <coughs> <coughs> so 
under capitalism, <coughs> there is division of labor. In modern capitalism, this is called in a specialization. But we all know that factors of production are of two types a specific factor and non specific factor. Wizard, Wizard and Bomba work two economists. Wizard, first of all, pointed out a specific and non specific factors. What is a specific factor of production? Suppose pilot. The pilot can do only one work. Aeroplane. And if there is only, there is no aeroplane, then he cannot do any other work. Labor. Homogeneous labor. He will do labor work in farming, in industry. So this is called a specific. But there are non-specific factors. Through a specialization, they have different types of knowledge, different types of activities. They can be used of different uh, field. So homogeneous level and heterogeneous condition. What is the reality? Homogeneous or heterogeneous? Heterogeneous is reality. That every one is different from other. All are liberal. But all laborers are categorized. One who knows electronics, one who knows computer, one who is exposed to the large machines, one who is a uh, small scale uh, machines user, one may be handicraft labor. So there is a heterogeneity in factors of We cannot take it homogeneous. Homogeneous factor is a specific for one work. But non-specific factor may be used for different, different work and which will be explained through the production possibility curve. This will give rise to opportunity cost that you can do four types of work that which one you are preferring and which is your next best alternative. So this non-specific factor has given the concept of opportunity cost in the analysis of theory under capitalism. What to be produced by a capitalist? Today, this will depend upon opportunity cost of the factors of production opportunity cost of the labor, opportunity cost of the uh, capital. India exports to USA, U USA exports to India, USA exports, suppose aeroplane, and India exports bicycle, swimming machine, harmonium. In value sense, one aeroplane will come to India, more dollar will be required to pay. And what we receive from selling all these things, we are not getting too much dollar. So what commodity you are producing? In international market, what is value? That depends upon that your factor is specific or non-specific. In India, large number of labor and all are homogeneous, that all are illiterate or are not doing technical work. Homogeneous labor, but not efficient labor. So
So, under capitalism, all factors of production are best utilized. Next is, next advantage or merit of that the use of price mechanism. Under capitalism, price mechanism is used in both commodity market and factor market. Both in labor market, bond market, money market, everywhere demand and supply. Demand and supply factors will determine equilibrium in commodity market, equilibrium in money market, equilibrium in bond market, equilibrium in equity market. equilibrium in labor market, equilibrium in capital market. So, under capitalism, different markets follow price mechanism. That is also known as market mechanism. As Adam Smith also pointed out, individual hand, it will operate. There is no need of any public sector and government decision to produce slice bread or produce cosmetic and produce uh, construct luxury hotels. Public sector will do through order and command. But under private sector it will be free and decided by the demand and supply pressure. Next is merit of capitalism is employment opportunities. More employment opportunities are generated on the basis of uh, opportunity costs. There is handwork and converted to machine work and now it is electronic works. Systematically under capitalism, hand work, manual labor were replaced by automation, scientific management, rationalization and finally complete use of computerization and digital work nowadays in American economy, in U.S. economy, in a capitalist economy. Next is better a standard of living. This is the great advantage under capitalism. There was a theory that capitalists will exploit labor. And most of the countries were thinking that under capitalism, there will be only exploitation of the factors of production. But things have changed. In modern capitalism, a standard of living of all factors of production, a standard of living of workers, a standard of living of employers, all increased. If you go to the USA and Canada, you will find out that everyone has car. Just like in India, everyone has mobile. That was impossible in India in 1975. Mobile was a rare thing. In 1984, mobile invented 501 mobile. This was experimented by a money group. And at that time, people thought that one mobile or one family. But this has four mobile for four members of the family. And nowadays, two mobile to one person. This is limited to only mobile and motorbike, but not to other items of consumption. Overall, Quality standard is not increasing at par with U.S. economy. 
there is certainly change. In India also, a standard of living has improved a lot. But not the all. They are all persons as a car. All persons as a car. Population of USA is 33, 33 crore. And population of car is 40 crore. In our country, population is 130, 130 crore. And the car is 30 crore. It means 100 crore people do not have a car. So a standard of living. India is at toilet stage, toilet construction, toilet construction stage, that every household must have a toilet. This is our stage. After 70 years of planned economic development. So under capitalism, more employment, more production, more export, balance of payment is surplus, and more optimism, optimistic outlook. And under capitalism, last but not the least, that is R&D. Research and development, invention and innovations. There is fast changing economy so far as technology is concerned. What is technology? Technology means ratio between labor and capital. If there are four labor and one capital, and four capital and one labor, these are two tech types of technology. Four labor, one capital, then it is labor intensive technology. Four capital and one labor, this is capital intensive technology. Production will be same, but technology will be different. In our economy, labor size is very large market. So labor intensive technology is used in agriculture. But in 1967, in agriculture, there was use of machines, mechanized agriculture, new industry, agricultural revolution took place, new technology in agriculture by used. So large number of labor is released from agriculture and they joined in manufacturing sector and service sector, tertiary sector. E economy Economy is divided, capitalistic economy is divided into three sectors. Primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector. Take the example of USA. In the USA, primary sector, only 5% population is working population. Only 5%. And producing not only for USA, for half of the world they can produce. Best utilization of land by mechanization, computerization, digitization, wastage is negligent. Caring of the plant is like a caring of a child. So very high return. Only using 5% population. Today in India, 57% 57% population is engaged in agriculture. When we got independence, 70% population were engaged in agriculture. But after 1967, when Green Revolution entered into India, there was a release of labor force, and nowadays it has reduced to 57%. Bihar state is 89% rural, only 11% urban. See the condition. No industry. Bihar economy is a consumer's market, buyer's market. 
buyers market will help those states which are selling product. 60 lakhs pieces are purchased in Bihar per day and that accelerate income of other parties because they are producer. India, Bihar is buyer. So, American economy is characterized by these features and therefore its per capita income is very high, national income is very high. Every country is compared with USA income, USA standard of living. Quality of education will improve, research oriented education will develop and therefore every nation, 192 nations are uh, member of UNO and 189 countries are member of uh, IMF and IBRD, 166 perhaps of WTO. But the aim of large number of countries are towards capitalism, capitalist economic system. Route towards it, nowadays, liberalization, privatization, globalization. What is liberalization? Liberalization says that under British rule, there were several acts, several thousand acts controlling all parts of the economy under slavery system. But now country is independent. So most of the laws are not required. And therefore, liberalization is that policy which recommends that those laws which are creating problem in the process of development should be removed, should be amended, so that process of development will smooth and there will be increase in growth rate. So,